Hello and welcome to Prime at 9. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. The Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation in Gujarat has imposed a ban on the sale of non-vegetarian food items at stalls alongside public roads from Tuesday. BJP leaders meet Kerala governor, demand NIA probe into RSS workers killing. A special newborn care unit was inaugurated at District Hospital Mon on Tuesday. The unit will offer various services for newborns. Now for the news in details. The Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation in Gujarat has imposed a ban on the sale of non-vegetarian food items at stalls alongside public roads from Tuesday. Stalls selling non-vegetarian items will not be allowed along public roads and in the 100 meter radius of schools, colleges and religious places, Town Planning Committee of Ahmedabad Mun Municipal Corporation has decided. AMC Town Planning Committee Chairman Devang Dhani told ANI that the execution will start tomorrow, which Devang Dhani said. He further informed that people where the city are complaining about its sale alongside the public roads and a decision was taken in the meeting of the committee. Reacting to the ban, Gujarat Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel said that people are free to eat whatever they want to. It is not a question of vegetarian and non-vegetarian and people are free to eat whatever they want, said the Chief Minister Anand. The food being sold at stalls should not be harmful and the stalls should not obstruct traffic flow, said the Chief Minister. Bhatia Janata Party Kerala President K. Surendran on Tuesday met Kerala Governor Arif Mohammed Khan seeking a national investigation agency probe into the recent murder of a Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sang worker in Palakkad. Speaking to ANI after the meeting with the Governor, Surendran alleged that the Social Democratic Party of India, the political arm of the Popular Front of India, was behind the killing. They requested the governor to advise Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan to hand over the case to NIA, Surendran said. The Kerala police and government officials are supporting the culprits and even after identifying the culprits, police are yet to arrest the SDPI activists after 24 hours, Surendran alleged. Terror elements are involved in these and those who kill the RSS worker has got training, Surendran alleged. People lost the faith in Kerala police, so our demand is to hand over the case to NIA because the terror elements are very, very visible in this case. Trained terrorist has killed this innocent boy in front of his wife. This is not the first incident. This is the second murder since last 15 days. So Kerala, the Kerala police is totally failed to maintain the law and order. So we demand an NIA inquiry in this case. We will also approach the Honorable Home Minister and the Home Ministry Delhi soon. A special newborn care unit was inaugurated at District Hospital Mon on Tuesday with also the launch of National Newborn Week 2021. YP David, chaplain of the District Hospital Mon, dedicated the special newborn care unit, after which National Newborn Week 2021 program was chaired by Dr. C. L. Peter, the MO of District Hospital Mon, while CMO Mon, Dr. Kejongol Sophie, delivered the welcome address. A short speech was also delivered by Dr. Tamjan Sangla, who is the additional director, Department of Health and Family Welfare. A short presentation on National Newborn Week by Dr. Chenji Konyak, the MO Pom Ching block, was also given. It was informed that a newborn is a baby age 0 to 28 days of life. The unit will offer services at care at birth, care of normal newborn babies, as well as managing of low birth weight babies less than 1.8 kilograms and all sick newborns except those requiring mechanical ventilation and major surgical interventions. 
follow up of babies discharge from the unit and high risk newborns immunization and referral services the new little period carries the highest risk of mortality as if illness is not maintained during this period properly if we don't manage this properly it might lead to the developmental delays and lifelong morbidities and about three fourth of them all the new little deaths occur in the the governor of Nagaland and also the chief rector of Nagaland University, Professor Jagdish Mukhi, and his wife visited the Nagaland University campus at Lumami in Zunoboto district on November 16 and interacted with the faculty and the students. The governor had a discussion with the faculty and the students and heard their problems and assured to take it up with the government. He also shared his ideas about how new forms of education can be taken up by the university. Addressing the gathering, the governor said he was informed that the university comprises three campuses and that the campuses look into the same goal of turning the university into a center of excellence. He said that we must think of starting new programs, that is, skilled-based programs based on the quality of the land and the agricultural activities can be conducted. District administration officials, officials of the state and university, and officers from the paramilitary and army were present at the event. And about the function of the university has given a good detail. I'm thankful to him. Our speaker, professor, president of the Teachers Association. Definitely, I have been a fighter for the teacher cause in the university. There are many things uh, in the university which we brought over in their being in the union and uh, that is available only in Delhi University those things which is worth imitating in the other universities also. Regarding your uh, various demands which are uh, not profitable academic institutions as such Mogokchung Press Club observed National Press Day on November 16 by hosting a small program at Hotel Mitsubin with Akang Nung Sang Jamir, editor of vernacular Ao Milan, as a special guest of the event. Jamir said that the Fort Estate has a big responsibility in expressing the opinions of the people. He said that reporters and media persons should merely be considered photographers or event reporters but should live up to their mark and work with zeal towards quality news. Concluding remarks remarks of the event was given by Sashi Marin Jamir, secretary of Mukokchung Press Club, which was followed by an open discussion on the day's theme, who is not afraid of media. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, media Members of the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan's Neighborhood Sanitation Committee of three wards in Twensang, namely Bazaar A, Bazaar B and High School, filled potholes on November 16 in Twensang. About one kilometer of the road from the clock tower area till the high school junction was filled with mud and gravel by leaders of the three wards with the help of few laborers of Twensang Town Council. President Ai Chi Ching and Secretary Ai Hong King said that the initiative was like a gift or donation for the people of Twensang because the Christmas festive season is approaching and the potholes pose a threat for pedestrians and vehicles. It was informed that they talked with the additional deputy commissioner regarding the matter and were given a dumper and a JCB to carry mud and fill the potholes. The mud and gravel were donated by a citizen, late Kikam's update stated.
Situation is going from bad to worse and neither the Urban Development Department nor the Public Works Department has looked into this issue, it was informed. The month of December will see many students and working people outside of the town returning and it is during such season many people are on the road and accidents are prone to happen if the roads are not repaired in time, NSC officials added. The Dimapur Police Administration has issued a notice asking individuals who have more than two arms to give to the police. The Dimapur Police issued a notice on November 16 stating compliance with an office memorandum of the Home Department with regard to the Arms Amendment Act 2019. Section 3.2 of the Act provides that a licensee in possession of more than two firearms is permitted to retain with him any two of such firearms and shall deposit his remaining firearm with the officer in charge of the nearest police station or with a licensed dealer or where such person is a member of the armed forces of the union in a unit armory, the notice stated. All arms license holders in Dimapo district are directed to comply with the directive, the police stated. National Press Day was observed today in Manipur with Chief Minister N. Biren Singh as the chief guest at the Directorate of Information and Public Relations Complex, Nityai Pat Chutik. Information and Public Relations Minister T. H. Biswajit Singh was the function president. Presentation of the State Journalist Awards 2021 in eight different categories and a workshop on the topic Who is Not Afraid of Media were the main highlights of the program organized by the DIPR of Manipur. Speaking at the occasion, Biren Singh stated that the state's government will always uphold freedom of expression and will never curtail press freedom. However, one should also ensure that freedom of expression does not violate morality and decency, he observed. Being a leader from the media background, the chief minister said he fully understands the problems faced by media persons of the state. Biren Singh said various steps had been taken by the present government for the welfare of the media fraternity of the state. The Manipur State Journalist Welfare Scheme had been introduced to provide one-time financial assistance to accredited and recognized journalists of the state and their families. A total of Rs 25 lakh had been utilized from the interest incurred from the Corpus Fund of Rs 10 crore till date, he added. Pension amount for retired journalists has been hiked from Rs 5,000 to Rs 8,000 and from 2,000 to Rs 4,000 for family pensioners, besides approving a one-time aid age relaxation for enrollment for applicants from the age group of 45 to 65 years, he said. The Chief Minister also added that coverage of the CMHT had been extended to the families of the recognized media persons as well. In addition to these schemes, the Chief Minister said that the media fraternity may also suggest to the government how it can help them in other matters. He asked them to have a healthy competi competition among themselves. The Chief Minister further urged the media fraternity to have proper verification of news before it is published or broadcasted. Biswajit Singh said to acknowledge the contribution of journalists in the state, the Manipur State Journalist Award was instituted in 1994 with only one category of award, that is the Best Editor Award, carrying a cash prize of Rs 5,000. Stating that the award now has eight different categories, Biswajit Singh said that the winners of the award are decided under rules by an independent panel of jury. Later, the Chief Minister presented the Best Editor Award on National Integration and Communal Harmony to the editor of Poknapam Daily, Aribam Robindru Sharma. The award carries a prize money of Rs 40,000, a memento and a shawl. Other State Journalist Award winners were staff reporter of Sanghai Express, Sapam Aruna Devi, Resident Editor of Huen Langpao Daily, Dr. Kaidam Atauba Maite, Staff Reporter of People's Chronicle Oinam Mission Singh, Staff Reporter of Sangai Express Sappam Aruna Devi, Staff Reporter of Sanalai Bak Daily Kangengbam Shankar Singh, Senior Staff Reporter of Sangai Express Mayang Lambam Roman Singh, and Reporter Anchor of Impact News Shetri Mayum Premchand Singh. These awards carry prize money of Rs 25,000, a memento and a shawl each.
The Commission for Air Quality Management in the National Capital Region and adjoining areas is holding an emergency meeting to discuss the depleting air quality. On Monday, the virtual meeting is being attended by Chief Secretaries, other officials of states and environment bodies such as the Delhi Pollution Control Committee. The meeting was scheduled on an urgent basis after the Supreme Court intervened and raised concern over the pollution levels in Delhi and adjoining states ranging between very poor and severe category. According to sources, CAQM also convened another meeting on Sunday where it asked Delhi and other NCR states to prepare to implement emergency measures listed under the Graded Response Action Plan. Amid repeated hooch tragedies in Bihar, Chief Minister Nitesh Kumar on Tuesday chaired a high-level review meeting on the liquor prohibition in the state. The meeting comes after a total of 32 people died in the state after consuming spurious liquor, the recent death being reported from Muzaffarpur. Bihar Minister Shanawas Hussain said that everyone knows the opinion of the government on the liquor ban and the meeting is being held to implement the law properly in the state. BJP leader Javesh Kumar Mishra urged all the political parties to come together on this in the public interest. The crime rate has decreased in Bihar after the liquor ban and parties should rise above politics and support this for the welfare of the people, Mishra said. Schools, colleges and universities in West Bengal reopened on Tuesday after a gap of 20 months as the COVID-19 situation across the state improved significantly. The offline classes from class 9 to 12 resumed in West Bengal from today with COVID-19 measures. Speaking to ANI, Shushmita Chakrapoiti, principal of Maharishi Vidya Mandir School, Kolkata, said that they are following all the COVID-19 protocols in the school. Precautions, they are well aware. We have sent, uh, circulated the notice beforehand, they know. And what we have done here is that we will, first we have done the thermal checking of the students and after that they will sanitize their hands. We have hand sanitizers there. And then there is food sanitizer. After that they will enter the classroom. In each bench only one student will be sitting per bench. And we have divided each section into two batches. First batch will be doing four periods. After that we will release the students and then there's a gap of half an hour when we will sanitize our classroom again and then the rest of the students of that section will be coming. While addressing the inaugural function of Purvanchal Expressway on November 16, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that Purvanchal is writing a new chapter of development. The politics done in Uttar Pradesh manner in which governments were run for a long time, they didn't pay attention to Uttar Pradesh's all-round and holistic development. One region of Uttar Pradesh and its people were given away to mafia and poverty. Modi said that he was happy that today this region is writing a new chapter of development, he added. Union Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia cycled to inaugurate the Health Pavilion at the 40th India International Trade Fair 2021 in Pragadi Medan, Delhi on November 16. The 40th India International Trade Fair started from the 14th and it will end on November 27th. BP check ho jai. Asha Behen, jab aapke ghar pe aati hai, tab wo aapko primary baatchit kare, wo primary baatchit ke adhar par usko aisa lage ki usko health and wellness center le jane ki awa shakta hai, uske liye bhi achhi system banai hai, scoring system. और उन्होंने मेरा भी स्कोर निकाला 
तो ये स्कोरिंग सिस्टम से आपको हेल्थ एंड वेलनेस सेंटर पर लिया जाए वहां उसका स्क्रीनिंग हो उसको डायबिटिक है कि शुगर है कि नहीं बीपी है कि नहीं आपको ओरल कैंसर है कि नहीं दैट्स ऑल फॉर प्राइम एट नाइन अमेस्टर कीप वॉचिंग हॉर्नविल टीवी